One of the challenges I'm really looking at in architecture is how to make it more accessible. One of the problems we've had is that enterprise architecture has been sold as being something that's primarily about IT, very detailed, very technical, and it tends to put people off. What we want to do, or what I want to do particularly, and I see you doing much the same, is connecting with people, connecting it, making it meaningful, and bringing it as, this is something that we actually need in the organisation, it's something we need in the enterprise, that it's about the human first, and by the way, there's some IT in the background. So, the way I've seen you do that has been through videos, through films, often scripted, staged, presented. What's the response been to that? We have roughly 20,000 views mm -hmm. and uh, it's always hard to measure the response. Do you have a particular audience that you're aiming at? Who is, who is actually, who, from your response figures, who are you actually seeing that sees it? For Architecture Corner, we say that this is the people that are involved in changes in companies. Right, so it's very much about change rather than yeah. the, the big label of architecture. Yeah. So something I've been looking at a lot as well is that to reframe it, instead of being architecture, it's just how do we do with, deal with change more effectively? Yeah. That's one of the things I've been trying to get over. Yeah. And uh, the thinking we have behind Architecture Corner is that we could have different people with different opinions to discuss. Because uh, all of us, you are Kim, Craig and I, were blogging, but we only had our perspective. Yeah. And with a discussion and interviewing others, you get other perspectives. Gene Hewson, for example, has been a, quite a common yeah. person in your, in your area. Yeah. You said about having conversations. Um, that's one side of, of Architecture Corner. Another one was these plays, these little plays about the seven sins and so on. We talked about Fail Fast yeah. two years ago, mm -hmm. and it's about experimenting. We, can, we say this is a research and development, how to do architecture education, more or less, the Architecture Corner. Yeah. And therefore, we have tried to do it in new ways. And we got inspired from you but always also for others, but to look at that as a short film, to mm -hmm. make it scripted, to have a story to tell. And you with have very it. high production values too. Yeah. And you, you've got that filming example of the fire crew actually setting fire to a building on your behalf. We took that opportunity. Mm. So being aware of what's going on, situational yeah. awareness is a good example, yeah. but in this case, in the filming one. Now, in the video you've just done, or oh, sorry, the video, the um, presentation you've just done, you talked about the importance of being a storyteller. How do you tell the story of architecture itself to people who don't know the story? Yeah. And all storytelling is more or less a classic free act story. Mm -hmm. You have the beginning, the middle, the end. Yeah. And if you want to people to remember the story, you have to go for that. That's universal. Wherever you are mm -hmm. on this planet, mm -hmm. you tell stories in the same. Right. Because what I've been doing with my little, my little videos, they haven't been stories in the same sense. What I've been doing with my videos has been take a particular question, usually a question that's been asked or a, a concern, a focus that's been asked, and then say, I've got between two and five minutes to do an answer. And just a comment and then follow through right as someone else was saying with a bunch of links to articles or to Wikipedia yeah. pages or books or whatever but so the way I do a script is a single page a single PowerPoint slide that has a set of bullet points on it and that constrains me to how much I can say in the time yeah. so it's a very limited set um, but they're not stories in the same sense that you've done and some of your other interviews are closer probably to mine of the, um, the, with the interviews you did with Jean and with um, Joachim and so on. The, so those are, again, a different approach. That's one of the reasons I wanted to do this video, was to look at how we can present or how we can explore ways of getting these ideas over. Education both for 
architects and also for people with whom we interact? The purpose with uh, the films, the videos we're doing, is it to entertain? Ah, oh, that's an important point, yeah. Or is it to learn somebody about something? Mm -hmm. Is it telling a news story? When <laughs> something has happened, we took up that as uh, part of the question. So you did a kind of review of, of, of a fail, failure issue or a no, success issue? No, it was um, when we had the Microsoft uh, tape bot that mm -hmm. was a failure. We took that up as an example mm -hmm. of a past failure. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, also security incidents that we talk about because they are actual. So that's mm -hmm. another way of doing it. So it's, the question is, what is the message you want to give to the audience? What do you want to tell them? And what are we bringing to them as well? That's yeah. also true. It's what are we bringing to the story? What are we bringing to, not just, it's not so, so much a little story in its own right necessarily, but the wider story of what architectures do, not just enterprise architecture, but whatever form of architecture it is. It might be a brand architecture, for example. And it's very, architecture is a very wide yeah. area. and. My belief is that you have to explain your view of architecture, otherwise other person will not understand what you do. Yeah, that's, for example, in my own case, I've been doing this series of little short ones to present how I understand it. I'm not trying to say this is the way to do it, but simply this is the way I understand it, because if I understand it this way, these are the consequences. If I try to understand it a different way, there will be different consequences which may not lead to what you want. And I think the good thing with your example is that you show this is how I do it. Yeah. Because then you can relate to it. When I do architecture work, uh, I used to have a plan. What should be included and what should not be included. Mm -hmm. And then I do a PowerPoint page for each part that is the piece in the puzzle. Mm -hmm. and put it on from the wall. So it could be between 100 200 PowerPoint pages yes. on the wall. Yeah. And then when the people in the organization go there, I can show them their piece. Yeah, which is, was it you or Martin was saying, I think it was you, was saying about, about have a good space, a space yeah. where people can come in and play, yeah. a, people, a place where people see how these things are working together, where they can draw connections, where they can yeah. make the connections themselves. It's when people start to own it. I talked to several people about how to uh, communicate. And for me, the architecture tools, they are not a good communication tool. There's, there they're, are more of, they're, they're more of a repository. Yes. There's and also, yeah, there's something about, when I talk about decision records, like the tool I showed this morning, it's the people who were working on it, it will have far more meaning. In fact, it will have almost no meaning to anyone who wasn't there. Yeah. That we have summary sheets and summary things that yeah. are the accessible summaries. Yeah. But the others are workspaces. One of the reasons why I think it's important to keep them is because in an iterative environment, we're going to come back to them. Yeah. What happens at the moment is that we have the rough stuff which we throw away, then we keep mm -hmm. the report and we have no idea how we got there. Then when we iterate, we've got to start all over again. Yeah, and this is why I always do a different scenarios and SWOT analysis yeah. on all architectural assignments. Yes. That's a crucial part of it. Yeah. In this, on the blog, you can yeah. see this is the decision we took for the course of this. Yeah. And if there is a new uh, objections, if there are new constraints, the constraints have disappeared. Yeah, then we may take a new decision based on that. Yeah, so how does it develop then? If you've got a, for example, a SWOT analysis, then when you've resolved that challenge, resolved a threat, it's that you can see by keeping the, not just the last one, but the set of them, you can see how it's developed. Yeah. And that's one of the things that's important. That's why yeah. I use the term score. Yeah. It's because we keep track of how yeah. it developed. What's the score? What's yeah. the phrase there? So, but to come back to the original concern, the original question, 
how these are ways in which we can keep looking at improving ourselves, improving on how to involve everyone in architecture to show why it's important to them, to help build their competence at it, and along with ours as well.